Raider Nation, click that like button right now if you're for ready for the Raiders to take down the Dallas Cowboys. My fiance is a Cowboys fan. Chugs' wife is a Cowboys fan. We live down here in Dallas, and quite frankly, this preseason game means a lot, a lot of bragging rights. So if you're ready for the silver and black to crush the Cowboys, hit that like button right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Reds here, host of the Raiders Report, and you're watching Inside Look. Every week, I'm going to sit down with the host of the opposing team that the Raiders are going to be going up against this week, the Dallas Cowboys host, and I sat down with Tom Downey. You're going to see the five biggest storylines for the opposing team and why that's important for the Silver and Black. We're also going to be breaking down some of the biggest strengths and weaknesses and how the Raiders can beat them. Now, obviously, this is the preseason, so it's going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to be looking at a lot of the weaknesses and how the Silver and Black can take advantage of that. But I got a preseason week two challenge, and I need my inside look video to get more than Tom's over at the Cowboys report so if you don't want to lose to the cowboys if you appreciate this show if you think the nation is better than cowboys because if there's another fan base that i hear cowboys nation it drives me nuts down here i believe there's only one nation so let's prove it this week let's win this like battle so i talked to tom and out of all the channels we here have here at chat sports Raiders report is second in the subscribers only to the Cowboys channel. They have 190,000. Tom is also one of the most, I think, intelligent people in the NFL biz, especially for his NFL draft content. If you want to go yell at him on Twitter and or ask him more questions about this preseason game, you can always hit him up at what going downy. For this matchup, though, this is a big one. I will admit it's really late at night, which I do not like. The fact that this game's getting kicked off at 9 p.m. Eastern time means Saturday night's going to be a wild, wild night for Jeremy Chuggs and I. So make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be doing a watch party. Last week, we had a, close to 100,000 people tune into our watch party. We gave away a Rich Gannon signed helmet. I actually got to look. I don't even know what we're giving away this week. I think it's a, it's a jersey. I think it's a signed jersey if I'm being... Maybe it's a Devontae jersey. I'll go back and I'll look. Bottom line, hit that subscribe button, pull up. It's going to be a hell of a time. So coming up here, we're going to look at the Cowboys and Raiders storylines entering this preseason game because I know once the regular season hits, it's a lot easier to follow who's playing, this and that. So what I wanted to do is just ask Tom the top five biggest storylines in this one. The first one, he said, the starters, are they going to be playing? He told me that he expects to see maybe – five to ten guys who are going to be like key rotation pieces in the game and most likely they're only going to play a very little of that group so early on you're going to see some Cowboys players get out there and get some reps in for the Raiders side of it though I want to see obviously how Aiden handles going up against these guys should you know a guy like Gardner Minshew if he goes out there and he starts and he goes up against a lot of these you know starting caliber defensive players those are some good notes to look at, and I've been somebody that's been sitting up here saying, give Gardner the start this week because Aiden got the start last week, but if Aiden goes out there and he starts against the Cowboys and that starting defense, and then a lot of the backups come in against Gardner, especially because also Aiden last week played only one snap, Gardner, not one snap, one series, Gardner played three different series. I think who goes out there and starts this game obviously is going to be super important for the Raiders, but it's also important because the Cowboys, and it's very well known that they're not planning on playing they're not planning on playing a lot of their starters in this game. Let's go to the second storyline here, and it's Trey Lance. And the reason why this is important, I think, for Raider fans is because the Raiders have that connection with Rich Scangarillo. Rich Scangarillo was a part of that 49ers team that traded up all those picks to get Lance when he was a part of the San Francisco. But he's been up and down in week one. He has not done a good job under pressure, so I'd like for the Raiders to try to get some pressure on him. You know, like a Tyree Wilson, I'm looking at you. Too many really bad throws. He needs a ton of reps. But for the Raiders, I think it's also a good thing of I've talked about Lance so much as a potential option only because of Rich Gangarillo. I've never said I believe in Lance. In fact, I've always been somebody that has said that Lance is not very good. But I think it's at least fun to watch Trey Lance. And now we get to see him up against Nathan Peterman. Let's go to the number three storyline. Tom says it's Mozzie Smith. And Mozzie Smith, defensive tackle from Michigan. I want to see what Mozzie Smith does up against this Raiders interior offensive line because 
The Raiders' interior offensive line last week definitely struggled. I want to see what Cody Whitehair looks like. Are we going to see Jackson Powers Johnson? I'm not 100% sure. A Jordan Meredith, he needs to be able to step up. The Raiders' interior offensive line in general needs to do a much, and I mean much better job from top to bottom, and I just want to see in general how this offensive line is going to be able to handle some of the pressure that the Dallas Cowboys are going to try to bring on a consistent basis. Coming up, we still got more storylines here to get into. I got, looks like, two more to go from Tom. But before I get into all of that, I do want to tell you all about our sponsor because if it's not for them, I y'all would have to pay to watch this show. That's how we're able to keep the lights on and able to keep it free. Speaking of money. Rocket Money, the app that's going to save you hundreds of dollars. That's what Forbes said, if you don't believe me. Rocket Money is a personalized finance app that helps find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with just a few taps. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million to cancel subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash LVRaiders. That's rocketmoney.com slash LVRaiders. Rocketmoney.com slash LVRaiders. Now, I love my fiance Alex, but we've been trying to save up for a house, been trying to save up for a honeymoon, been trying to save up for a wedding in general, and I think Rocket Money has helped us, you know, just have a better understanding of where the hell we're spending our money. And sometimes in today's day and age, like, you need to be able to know that. You don't realize how many subscriptions you have. A lot of times you don't even realize how much money you're wasting. Rocket Money is going to help optimize your fancies, finances. So please take advantage of it. The link's going to be available to you all down in the comments, down in the description, rocketmoney.com slash LV Raiders. Let's go to the fourth storyline here for the Dallas Cowboys, and it's the Cowboys are a team that's going to be aggressive. They, are, they play an aggressive style defense, trying to get a lot of turnovers. They forced four INTs last week. Tom did say, like, Stetson Bennett literally threw it to each guy. But, like, for the Raiders, one of the things that Antonio Pierce is really looking at is ball control, ball safety. So if Gardner and Aiden are going up against a team that, let's face it here, has, uh, you know, if they're going up against a team that's going to try to create turnovers, it's going to be something to watch. I also just want to see how Nathan Peterman's going to do in this game, who was just added to the Raiders uh, today at, since I'm making this video on Tuesday. Let's go to the fifth and final storyline here. It's the return game. Tom really anticipates that Dallas is going to try to return at least every single kick. So, Gavonta Turpin, he's not going to play in this game, which means that this could be a good opportunity for the Raiders to work on some of their kick return special teams guys a little bit more because if they plan on every single time taking kicks out, no matter where it is, it could be an important thing for the Raiders to know going into it saying, hey, if we need to figure out an extra gunner, if we want to figure out some of this extra special teams, maybe you decide to put Jack Jones back there since he's been working at times as a kick return guy, not kick return guy, kickoff guy, instead of Daniel Carlson. This could be your opportunity to do it because from Tom saying – they're going to try to return almost every single kick that happens in this game. Coming up next here, let's look at the Cowboys' biggest weaknesses and how I'm hoping that Antonio Pearson company tries to take advantage of some of these mismatches that the Raiders have. And, you know, again, when I, when I want to do this show in the regular season, it's going to be a lot better in my mind simply because you're going to take advantage of those weaknesses. That's kind of how you're going to win the football game. In the preseason, it's not exactly, you know, as easy to look at. Maybe it's a little bit more apples to oranges instead of apples to apples. But coming up, we're going to look at some of the biggest weaknesses for Dallas. Before I get into that, I want to give a shout out to some new subscribers. Over the past, I'd say, week or so, we've probably added almost 1,000 new subs here. So shout out to EZ, Miss, Ghost, Gary, and Rio. This is the most interactive Raiders YouTube channel out there. I think we've been able to create a really awesome family. And if you are watching this show, because I know like, 30% of the people right now that are watching the Raiders report are not subscribed. It's kind of a mind-blowing number. Join the family. Hit that sub button. Who knows? You might see your name on a future show. Let's look at here some of the Cowboys' weaknesses on the offensive side of the football. The first one that Tom gave me was the running game. And this might be the worst running back room in the National Football League. Zeke looks old. Hell, they are so desperate at running back. I saw that they had Micah Parsons. Jeremy was telling me, working at times at running back, which is done by Micah, and it's done by Dallas. But to me, 
I want to see then Tyree Wilson step up. I want to see a young player like Byron Young step up. Nesta Jade Silvera, if they're telling you that this running game is a little bit of a concern and if they don't have any confidence in Trey Lance, well, let's stack that box and let's get some work in against the running game. But one player, and I mean one player that I am really going to look at, is Byron Young. Because Young is a dude that we've heard you know, some reports of maybe starting to get it a little bit. And then you look at last week in the preseason game and it's like, he just doesn't have an anchor. Like, you got to be able to prove that you can be a reliable defensive tackle in the NFL with the new regime. And Byron just has not been able to do that. So you, now you have a weak matchup, and let's take advantage of it. Another position group that I'm really going to be looking at is that linebacker unit. And, you know, the Raiders went with a 5-2 front to kind of get that game started last week against Minnesota. Maybe they do the exact same thing depending on who's playing a QB for Dallas. But if there's one player, when I went back and I watched the film, and a player that I was not pleased with at all, and quite frankly, I think I've actually should have maybe potentially made him a loser in that first preseason game, was Luke Masterson. When you go back and you watch the tape on the Kanai Mount Kanai uh, Wanu run, Kanai Wanu, it's a hell of a name, but it was the long touchdown run against Minnesota. I don't know what Luke Masterson's doing on that play. He's supposed to crash towards the hole on the left side. He just runs directly like into the back of his defensive lineman, and then that creates a huge running lane, which led to that Vikings touchdown. For a player like Luke, I want to see him just do a better job in this game specifically because, you know, Amari Bernie, young player, but was one of the winners. Tommy Eichenberg, drafted by this regime. And another guy that I just, you can't forget about is Kanai Malga. Kanai Malga always finds his way somehow just sticking around on this Raiders roster. Good special teams guy. The fan base likes him. The team likes him a lot as well. So Masterson, definitely going to be a player to watch very heavily in this game. Let's go to the next one here for the Cowboys' weaknesses, their offense. Lots and lots of drops. Tom told me that there were 41 opportunities last week and they had five drops, which maybe doesn't seem like a lot. That's a lot of drops in the NFL. So for me, I want to see Ja'Cory and get aggressive. I don't know if we're going to see Nate Hobbs and Jack Jones, but like to me, it's a lot of these younger players. MJ Devonshire, go out there and get aggressive. DeCamrian Richardson, go out there and get aggressive. Ja'Cory and Bennett, those top three players are the guys that I need to be able to see a little bit more from because I'm still getting asked, are we going to sign a corner? I don't think we're going to go out and sign a corner anytime soon. But this game could be a big determining factor in that. Let's go to the last weakness here, and it's Trey Lance's passing. And Lance is not good. I'm telling you all that right now. The moment I started watching the film from North Dakota State, this is one of those that we got right here at the Raiders Report. I said, do not go out and get Lance. He's not good enough of a passer. The sample size isn't there. And it's you know just one of those things that I'll stand on. If you're the Raiders, though, and you know that Trey Lance has been struggling, let's create some pressure. Let's do something a little bit different where maybe we bring a little bit more pressure. Maybe we force him to make some bad decisions. Like, can you go out there and use some of your younger players, maybe an Amari Gaynor who looked pretty damn good, have him in some more pass rushing situations. Tyree Wilson, more pass rush situations. Charles Snowden, Janarius Robinson. Get after those guys because I want to see it. Trey Lance has struggled with his passing, so let's get after him here a little bit. The Raiders made a move, and they made a move for Nathan Peterman. And when I think about this question, it's kind of a mind-blowing question, but it's an honest question. Who do you think is the better quarterback? Let's say right now the Raiders had an opportunity to bring Trey Lance in as your quarterback three. Do you think Trey Lance is a better quarterback than Nathan Peterman, or do you think Nathan Peterman is a better quarterback than Trey Lance? Let me know down below. Type TL for Trey Lance. Type NP for Nathan Peterman. The reason why I'm going to say Nathan Peterman is because it's not the better quarterback in terms of a starter. Neither is a starting quarterback in the NFL. Quite frankly, neither is a backup quarterback in the NFL. But Nathan Peterman is the better QB3 because he's smarter, he's more intelligent, he knows how to pick up a playbook, can be a better mentor, can be a better leader than somebody like Trey Lance that, quite frankly, has not been able to show that he can do Anything from a backup quarterback standpoint. Let's go to the Cowboys' weaknesses now on the defensive side of the football and how our team can hopefully take advantage of some of those mismatches. It's the run defense. And Cowboys, you know, Dallas is a team that's built on being able to get after the quarterback. And you see it at times, even last season, like, you know, especially in that playoff game where Aaron Jones ran wild. This is a team where if they get fall behind, their run defense is not good enough. So I want to look at a running back like, Zamir White, maybe Alexander Madison. You know, what does Sincere McCormick look like? But especially, and I mean especially, can I get some Dylan Lalby work going against the Dallas Cowboys? Because if there was one player that you literally had to crumble up all the tape on Lalby and throw it away last week, 
you, you did. And it's not Lauby's fault. It's the offensive line's fault. It's the fact that the Lou Getze offense, and I shouldn't even say the Lou Getze offense, the offense in general in the second half last week against the Vikings was a disgrace. And that might even be a, a too nice of a word to say. But I need to see what Lauby looks like with Aiden. What does Lauby look like with Minshew? What does Lauby look like when guys are actually blocking? Because nobody blocked at all in the second half last week. So I want to see what this team can do running the football. And here's an opportunity up against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's go to another one here. Their pass rush depth is limited a little bit. But I kind of like this because if Tom's sitting up here going, yeah, this team's run defense is bad, that this team has got bad pass rush depth, well, then there's no more excuses for this offensive line. The amount of people that got mad at me last week for saying that the Raiders' offensive line played as bad as what they did in the second half, like, I mean, do you guys want me to give you my honest opinion or do you want it all to be cupcakes, butterflies, and rainbows? Like, if you want participation trophies, this isn't the show for you. If I see something that I don't like, it doesn't make me a Raiders hater. It doesn't mean that I'm hating on those players. It's me giving you my honest opinion. So now this is a week of, all right, well, let's prove it. Like, we can either shut up and prove it or just go out there and do it because this is not going to be a team. AP doesn't want a team that creates excuses, and I'm not going to be a host that creates excuses either. So now we're going up against a team that's got bad pass rush depth, bad run defense. So for the tackles and interior offensive linemen, the excuses are stopping this week. You got to do a better job. Wear that jersey, wear that helmet with some pride because I didn't see it in the second half last week. Let's go to the final thing here. Tom just put Eric Scott Jr. And I guess like, so he's one of the outside corners for Dallas. He primarily plays on the left side. I anticipate that he's going to be a starter here in this matchup. So the, what I'm going to look for here is maybe A, who gets lined up against him. But also, you know, I'm looking at the, Christian Wilkerson's of the world, the Jalen Guytons, the DJ Turners, Trey Tucker. Is he able to have another good game? I'm not going to lie. I'm curious to see if Devontae Adams plays in this game. Antonio Pierce did say if all players are healthy that every single Raiders player would play in the preseason. So quite frankly, I want to see Devontae go out there. But the number one receiver that I'm going to be looking at is Christian Wilkerson. And I'll tell you this right now. If Wilkerson ends up making this roster again, I think I deserve to get pied in the face. Because last offseason I said no chance Wilkerson makes the roster finds a way to make the roster this offseason how many Raider fans and be honest with me right now how many Raider fans the, if I would have said Christian Wilkerson's making this roster back in May and June y'all would have laughed at me Wilkerson just proved that he's reliable sure hands he's going out there and he's doing the right things and this is somebody that McDaniels brought in and he has been able to keep on this team Ramble Keaton didn't step up the way that I was hoping Keelan Doss got waved on Tuesday like Jalen Guyton did a pretty good job, but if the Raiders are going to keep six receivers, I think Christian Wilkerson could do it and maybe get some good matchup opportunities this week against the Cowboys. Coming up next here on the show, let's look at my prediction for this game. And my prediction last week for the Raiders and Vikings game, I got the Raiders score correct. I, I was close. I said 24-13 last week against Minnesota. Unfortunately, the Raiders offense in the second half and defense didn't really decide to show up. For this game, though, right now as it stands, the over-under is 39 and a half. I would take the over on that bad boy. The Raiders are also seven-point favorites. I'm going to hammer that as well because the Raiders are going to play way more starters than what the Dallas Cowboys are. So for that reason, I'm going to go with the Raiders are going to get a dub here, 27 to 10. And I can promise you this. The Raiders will not give up a touchdown in the first half. Not going to happen. If it is the Raiders starting defense and the second string guys out there, they're not giving up a touchdown. Trey Lance isn't good enough. I think we might see Cooper Rush a little bit in this game as well. But if Trey Lance gets the start, I might say they might blank him because Lance is that bad and the defense for the Raiders is that legit. So one last thing before I get out of here. I told Tom the to that the nation is going to take over his channel. And... You know, Tom and I have a, probably one of the coolest relationships that I have here at Chat Sports. He's the guy that I've worked with the longest, and I've kind of helped, you know, see the Raiders and the Cowboys channel build a company that is Chat Sports, and it's been a beautiful thing. But Tom does get nervous about Raider Nation. I also know that that's the only channel that's bigger than the Raiders report here at Chat Sports. So I'm asking y'all this. If you hate the Cowboys as much as I do, at any opportunity, if you get just five minutes, five minutes is a lot, 30 seconds of your time. You're sitting down. You're dropping a number two. I want you to go to the Cowboys Report YouTube channel and go on any of the videos and just spam Raiders. It's going to put Tom into a tizzy. So pick any video. 
Hey, put a Raiders comment down below. Tom's going to make an inside look video. Do it there. Tom's going to do a, probably a preview of players to watch. All of that good stuff. Go over to that channel. It's going to be available to you all down in the comments and in the description. This week is about taking over the Cowboys report. It's about showing who the real nation is because I'm sick of hearing Cowboys Nation down here. For me, for Jeremy, for all of us Raider fans, let's make sure we do this thing and let's make sure we show Cowboys fans that there is only one nation.